Picture this, you're working on a project in Claude, then context fills up, so you start a new conversation, then all of a sudden, the agent doesn't know what to do next. Sure, you can add a markdown file, but for large projects, that can take up a lot of context, and it's easy for the agent to mess up priorities. Beads aims to fix all of that by giving your agent an issue tracker that can be version controlled and can even be synced to Jira. But why would anyone use this over SpecKit or Kiro? Let's find out. And before we do, don't forget to hit subscribe. Beads was created by the ex-head of engineering at Sourcegraph, the same company that created AMP, as a way to chain issues together so that agents can perform complex tasks in the right order, which is what we're going to do with this project, an app to help me view my brew packages. After setting up Beads in the project, we should have a .beads folder, which contains an SQLite database for all of our issues, along with some other database files, our issues in a JSON lines format, the Beads daemon to to auto export database changes to JSONL for Git compatibility, and the socket enables storage and retrieval of issues via CLI commands. We'll talk more about CLI commands a bit later. But basically, for the other files, they work in a really cool way. Take a look at this. So because only JSONL files are committed to the Git repo, not the SQLite binaries, if someone pushes a change to Git and someone else pulls that change, the user pulls the updated JSONL file, merge conflicts are resolved if they are any, and the data is updated in the SQLite database, meaning user A will have the same issues as user B. This is known as a two-way sync, which is really cool. But at this point, we don't have any issues. So let's create one, which we can either do in the CLI, use the Beads MCP server, or just ask your coding agent directly, which will create all these issues and even put them under the Epic with correct P levels. From here, we could update or delete issues if we don't think they're needed. Then when you're ready, you can get your agent to start working on the issues and it will automatically update them with the relevant progress until there are no more open issues and the project is completed. Of course, from here, you could go on to add more issues, epics, even use a project specific database. And if you don't want to keep running commands to view the status of issues, you could use the web UI or even sync it with Jira. And for large projects, if your database ends up growing in size, Beads has a compaction feature that reduces the size of the database by compressing old closed issues while preserving their essential context. But why would I use Beads over the more popular spec driven development? Well, the biggest benefit is context. With SpecKit and other tools, you have Markdown and PRD files, some of which the agent needs to load in entirely, which takes up a lot of context. But with Beads, the agents can just query the database to get the information it needs, which works especially well for issues with dependencies, since the relationship is more explicit instead of being part of a list, meaning the LLM can just follow the dependency graph. And the human, so me, is never afraid of clearing the context because information is never lost. Not to mention the two-way syncing mechanism is better for multiple agents, even on different machines, to collaborate on the same project. Personally, the mental model of having issues, assignees, estimations, and epics is much easier for me to get my head around instead of thinking of PRDs. But I do prefer the emphasis on planning when it comes to spec-driven development that seems to be missing from beads. So one approach would be to create a detailed markdown file using something like SpecKit and then using beads to create the epics and issues. But maybe it's just overkill for a small to medium project. Anyway, what are your thoughts on beads? Are you planning to use it in a future project? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy coding.